Hey, welcome back to Rob's Garage Woodworking. Today we are going to talk about vintage turntables. And uh, there's a lot of turntables available, and you can still go out and buy used records from places like Goodwill or uh, pawn shops, and there's a lot of used record stores that carry records. Um, and you can buy new records now, even at like Sunrise Records and some other places as well, uh, because it's fashionable again. So if you're going to get a turntable, there's a few things you have to know. Um, and let's start with just the basics. So a turntable needs uh, phono equalization, the Recording Industry Arts of America equalization curve. And it's a special preamplifier before your preamp. So you have a phono preamp section, then you have your preamp, and then that goes to your power amp, and that powers your speakers. The old turntables don't have a preamp built in. You have to buy an old receiver that has a preamp section. Or now you can buy a phono preamp separate, and those are available all sorts of places. A lot of uh, stereo shops have those separate now. And you can buy the new turntables with the equalizer in it with Bluetooth sometimes or with USB. So you've got that that variety. Let's talk about the turntable itself. So the turntable is an electromechanical device and it is a high performance machine. Okay. So if you have crappy parts, you're going to have crappy performance. If it's made out of plastic, it's going to be crappy. If it's spindly little tone arms, they're crappy. Uh, so I'll show you these three turntables. I have three Japanese turntables, and the Japanese turntables are what you'll mainly find. You'll find some other ones as well, and I'll drop a few names. Um, but most of the Japanese turntables were actually made by a company called Microseki, and they made turntables for everybody. And even if they didn't assemble the turntable for everybody. A lot of times the components on your turntable were manufactured by Microseki, like this tone arm. Now this tone arm is an S-shaped tone arm. It's solid steel. It is uh, pretty thick. It's a heavy duty tone arm and it has the removable head shell and that is like screwed in and it's pretty tight. It's a good turntable. So this is like a good base level uh, turntable. So if you want to get higher than this turntable, you have to go to like a Rega or Riga as they call them in England, or a Lin, or maybe like a mid-level Project Audio, something like that, right? Um, there's other brands as well. There's millions of brands, but I'll, I'll show you a couple of things that you should know before you buy. So this one here, it's actually realistic RD8 8100 and this is a semi-automatic turntable now it's direct drive it has a heavy plinth um, it has a good shock absorbing feet like you can really move the table around and you can feel how the table moves on the feet um, so they're very good shock absorbing feet this one has one in the center here it only has uh, three because uh, I guess one of them broke and the previous owner just put it into the center. So it still works fine. Now, this one has the rubber mat and it's pretty flexible, so that's good. And then it has the die cast platter and this is a heavy platter. You'll see it's got a big ring on it and it's pretty thick. And then it has the strobe on the side here and the strobe light is over here and you can adjust the speed to make sure you are at the proper speed and you can adjust your speed adjustments here for 35 rpm and for 45 rpm then you have your speed selector switch 33 and 45 and your cut down and up so you can raise and lower the tone arm and cut it so you just go to cut and it'll take the needle off the record and return it to the home position. Then it has a 45 adapter and the dust cover. Um, I've removed it. You can slide these dust covers off 
and it has two rubber feet up here so the dust cover comes down and touches those for isolation. Then you have, so this is your tone arm, this is your head shell, this is your cartridge, and on the cartridge there's the needle in the end of the cartridge. Then you have your counterweight and your anti-skate. So some turntables don't have this anti-skate force, uh, some have them preset. So. If you have a preset one, you have to have like the same weighted cartridge. So you can't, you don't have the same selection of cartridges. Um, but usually, quite often, those turntables just have a crappy uh, way to get a cartridge anyway. So this one, you can unscrew this. All right. And you see, it has four contacts. It has a little uh, button there, and that's your locating pin. And then it has two little bolts that hold your cartridge on. And here's your cartridge. Okay, and it's the Sure RX75 model. All right, and you can barely see the needle. The needle's really tiny in there. So anyway, that slides in here slide it all the way back and then you turn this on and that locks it into place and there's a rubber o-ring and that helps to dissipate vibration so the whole tone arm is set up to dissipate vibration the, the heavy duty plinth is set to absorb and dissipate the vibration um, your platter is heavy so that it maintains the proper speed so if there's fluctuations in the motor um, the speed will be maintained due to the weight of the platter. And then, like I say, you have your strobe so you can adjust it, adjust your speed. And the nice thing about these head shells is you can get a couple of different head shells and you can change, like have a different cartridge on each head shell and you can um, actually listen to the different cartridges to see what you like. Um, it's really, really neat. So you can grab your tone arm from the back like back here. And what you want to do is you want to see if you can shake your tone arm. If you can move it back and forth or up and down without moving, you know, your anti-skating force and your counterbalance, your weight. So they have the numbers on it. So if your cartridge is like so 1.7 grams, you'll set this to 1.7 grams. You set your anti-skate to 1.7 grams. So what you want to do is grab your tone arm see if you can shake it back and forth if you can shake it like it's going to move side to side and it's going to move up and down this way but if the bearing shakes and is loose and it shakes side to side loose or back and forth or up and down loose that's bad so you don't want that so this is a really good turntable it's got a good tone arm it's got a solid head shell that doesn't move doesn't vibrate the bearing's good on it, it's got a good solid motor, it's got a heavy plinth, it's got a heavy platter, and it's just a well-made machine. And like I said, even though it says realistic on the front, it's rebranded, it's a micro secchi, it's a beautiful turntable. Next. So we go from good to bad. This is a Techniques turntable. This one is model SLBD27U. Um, it was probably made by Microsecchi. I'm not sure of these models. Um, this one has a nice soft rubber mat. Um, it has a light, much lighter um, platter so I can pull the platter off here so I'm just gonna take the belt off so the belt is here I right, lift that up and look how thin this platter is like it's it's paper thin it's super light the whole body of this is plastic now it still has shock absorbing feet and the feet aren't terrible like I said it's belt drive so you can see the belt here and that's replaceable. 
if I can here. All right, that's down all the way. Um, it's got lots of plastic gearing. Then you get to your tone arm. And this tone arm, it's, it's reasonably tight. There's a bit of play in it. You can feel it. You can hear it. Um, you probably can't hear it from my microphone, but I can feel it and hear it. And it's spindly, and there's no cartridge on this one. So the difference between this cartridge head shell is it has a little set screw in the side. So you just put your needle in, you stick the set screw in it, and it kind of pressure holds it in place, um, which is kind of a crappy system. This one has preset anti-skate, and it is a lightweight plastic turntable that is fully automatic apparently and I wouldn't play any records on this your records will sound scratchy there'll be clicks there'll be pops there'll be long scratches and you'll play the same record on the good turntable and the good turntable won't sound nearly as bad as the bad turntable now next up now this is a Citizen semi-automatic belt drive turntable and it has shock absorbing feet but they're not nearly as good as this one and this one is like half as good as the good one. So once again it has the rubber record mat but look how sturdy that is. It's like it's, it's not soft at all so that's not very good. And then for your motor, it has a belt drive again, and this belt is rather loose. Okay. So it sits pretty solid on this, and that has a slight wiggle. Um, this is, it has a little mirror for your strobe, it has little strobe marks on it, which is kind of a nice upgrade. But once again, it's very thin and lightweight material so it won't help to keep your speed so let's try to put this belt back on and the belt is very thin too it's kind of loose so that's just try to put that back on here there we go Okay, that's back on, spins, it's, it wobbles quite a bit, like, if you look at this, it shouldn't wobble like that, that's a uh, poor construction, right? Once again, it's plastic, so plastic is bad, uh, it has your 45 adapter, so the other one is missing its 45 adapter, and this has the head shell on it. And it uses a set screw on the side here for that. And when you grab this tone arm, you can actually feel how loose it really is. So it goes side to side, back and forth, up and down. And uh, it's just really loose. And you can't adjust the weight on either one of these uh, turntables. You can't adjust the counterbalance at all and you can't adjust the anti-skating force because it's preset because this is the only cartridge that you can get for them is this style and it's kind of a cheap cartridge and this one's not even like 90 degrees it's twisted and <laughs> I don't know why it's twisted it looks like it's been out in the sun or something <laughs> but it's not 90 degrees it's on an angle <laughs> so that's not good so you've got bad plinth, bad platter, bad bearing, bad tone arm, no adjustments, a bad needle and cartridge. So this is the worst type of turntable you can get. All right. And even this, like it's not soft. Your record's supposed to go onto a nice soft uh, mat. So some of the older turntables you'll find are undersprung. So there'll be a sub chassis that has 
your tone arm mount and your plotter motor mount will be on a sub chassis so inside your plinth there'll be another sub chassis underneath these guys will be mounted on that and when you push down the whole thing will move and it'll be spring loaded and it'll be really delicate okay and that is also to eliminate resonance uh, resonance can cause all sorts of noise to feed back into the needle and go through your stereo system so it's kind of like having uh, you know when your car has a bad wheel bearing and your car hums mm, when you're driving or squeals it's like that it'll induce a hum so what you want is a good solid turntable and then good tone arm good cartridge good mount all so that's that. my final thoughts so if you want a good uh, turntable that you can enjoy for years and years and years get one of these ones that has the strobe on the outside a heavy turntable make sure it's heavy make sure it's got the good feet make sure it's got the good s-shaped tone arm that there's no play in it and make sure that there's no play in the platter that the platter is nice and strong and then test it to make sure that the speed is accurate and you can tell that just with the strobe so that's really handy um, you'll be able to buy these anywhere from like 20 bucks to you know a thousand dollars and sometimes the twenty dollar one is just as good as the thousand dollar one and the guy that sold it for twenty doesn't know what it's worth and the guy that's selling for a thousand is trying to get the same amount of money he paid for his you know techniques twelve hundred you know because they were a thousand dollars back in the day uh, <laughs> now they're a good turntable got the s-shaped tone arm got the heavy platter got the heavy plinth um, really thick sturdy strong great table um, then if you want to upgrade past that you know look at rega like a rega p3 and up um, plus you have like moving magnet and moving coil cartridges so uh, the audio file cartridge basically is you get into the moving coil you have to have a moving coil preamp is different from the moving magnet preamp sometimes they have one that uh, you can switch from moving coil to moving magnet or you unhook the RCA cables from the back over to the moving magnet or the moving coil section on the back of your preamplifier or your receiver um, so yeah and there's Lin Lin has a lot of well they used to have a lot of really amazing turntables now they only have three um, they have three versions of the LP12 with three different tone arms, um, all excellent, of course. Um, and they have the sprung sub chassis that I was talking about earlier. Uh, not a lot of turntable manufacturers that I've seen have that, um, but that's another option. So when you go to listen to one of these, if you want to do what I call the turntable Olympics you take your worst most scratched up oldest record and then you play it and you listen and you listen to how it sounds and a good turntable with a, a lot of any resonance features with a good tone arm and a good cartridge and good bearing setup um, it's gonna sound almost new there's not gonna be a lot of stag there's not gonna be very loud clicks and pops and you're not really going to hear the scratches you'll hear a little bit but not nearly as bad as on a cheaper turntable so there's a big difference in quality when you move from this to this to that oh and there's one more type of turntable it's called a linear tracking so the tone arm is on this computer controlled belt and it follows the grooves like this and it's supposed to be accurate and you can still get some high-end ones that have that and they say that they're good but they may not be as good as they say anyway i hope this has helped you out uh, like i said if you have any questions give me a shout and i'll try to answer them uh, relatively quickly and that's about it anyway uh, if you like the video give it a like a thumbs up please subscribe if you're interested and that's about it. Um, thanks for watching.